Hello YouTube, welcome to another Dell Latitude E5500 upgrade video. So in the last video we upgraded the internal hard drive that is actually still lying right here um, to an SSD. Now we're going to take the next step and that is upgrading the CPU in this. The T7250 that's in it now is the base model CPU and if you update the BIOS for this laptop to the latest version, then it is actually possible to install all of the supported CPUs in it. And uh, these latitudes really support a heck of a lot of CPUs. Like last time, first take out the battery, of course make sure that the laptop is turned off. And uh, yeah, let's dig in. I'll lower the camera a bit. I right, just gotta take out this one screw on this panel again. Let me get some more. That's much better. So yeah, this part is still the same like last time. Quite a tough screw. There we go. Now we're in the laptop. By the way, let me show you the CPU that I will be installing in it today. This is it. This is an Intel Core 2 Duo P8700. Runs at 2.53 GHz. The current CPU runs at 2 GHz. And this one has a megabyte of cache more than the CPU that's in here now. This T7250 has 2 megabytes. This uh, P8700 has 3 megabytes. You can put a higher wattage and higher cache CPUs in here like the T9000 series, no problem. For instance, you could put in a T9600 or, any, or something. That will work just fine. But I will not be using that because it's uh, quite a bit more expensive. Okay, now let's find out how the cooling system here is connected. The cooling system in this laptop is actually very easy. The fan is only held in with a couple screws, two very small ones and two slightly bigger ones. And the heatsink itself is, well, basically only connected here around the CPU area. You just need to take this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. They're all labeled so you know which one to take out first. First, let's find screw number one. So right here. So we'll start with this one. These are spring loaded. You have to undo these in a cross pattern. That means follow the numbers on the heat sink here. Once you finish taking all of the screws out, it should pop up quite easily. There we go. This is also a good time to take a look at your heatsink here near the fan so you can see whether you need to clean it up. In my case, oh yes I do. So yeah, this is the entire cooling assembly. Here is the dried up thermal paste that you will need to remove before you will continue putting the new CPU in. So, yeah. As you can see, Dell used way too much around the CPU. It's incredibly disgusting. Using too much thermal paste is not a real problem, however. It will work, but uh, it's not very neat. Ah, we're making steady progress. The heatsink is now clean, so now we can start removing the CPU. By the way, if you're looking into replacing a CPU on your E5500 or any other laptop with socket P in it, and by all means, take a good look around on the internet which CPUs were actually put in these when they were shipped. Because that will give you a good... So, the heatsink is now clean. The CPU is still dirty, but we will not take a look at that. Um, if you're looking into upgrading the CPU on your laptop, if it's not necessarily an E5500, but it's similar, or at least a Core 2 Duo laptop, then take a look around on the internet um, which CPUs were shipped in your particular model, so you know what your upgrade path may be. 
at least then you'll know for sure that your CPU that you're trying to put in is supported because upgrading CPUs on laptops is not officially supported by the, uh, by the manufacturers. So you may end up with CPU that doesn't work. It's just as simple as that. So yeah, now we need to undo this little screw here in order to get the CPU free from the socket. In order to take the CPU out, a normal flathead screwdriver will do the job. Turn it all the way to the left, you'll notice the CPU actually popping up slightly. Oh, whoops. Let's see here, let's try that again. There we go. You need to turn it slightly more, then it will pop loose. There we go. It wasn't actually giving me any slack anymore, but oh well. Here's the CPU that I take and take it out of it. All of its nastiness, I'll clean this off later. This is the Corte Duo T7250, a two gigahertz chip. Now we take our brand new CPU Oh, wait. I need to clean this one off a little bit. I'll be right back. The previous owner left some ink on it, so I had to clean that off. Other than that, this thing seems to be good to go. So now I just put it in. Make sure where the triangle is. Okay, it's in the top right position of the socket. Now we just drop it in. Make sure it is in fact secured. Don't actually push it in, just feel if it's in. And then we turn the key all the way to the right. So now the CPU is secured. Next step, of course, is to apply thermal compound. So let's do that. I'll just uh, use some stuff that I've laying around. Be very careful. It's only a laptop CPU, so you really don't need a lot. Because there's very little surface that you need to be cooling. Just a small dot in the middle will do. And now we reapply the heat sink. By the way, here's the uh, North Bridge with CPU or GPU. So. Let's see here. Pop in the heatsink on the top first and lower it down on its screws. Okay, now let's retighten the screws again in a cross pattern, going backwards this time. So, first we did one, two, three, four. Now we're going to do four, three, two, one. And then you'll lastly tighten the screw near the north bridge. There we go, that's number three. And now we're gonna go number two. I'm not gonna go number two on camera, sorry. <laughs> For this pervert out there, just kidding. There we go. Now, number one. And lastly, there we go. Now the heatsink is secured again. Now, it's sort of the moment of truth. So let's put the cover back on. There we go. Let's, I'm gonna put in the battery again. And flip the laptop over. Let's take a small step, step back here. Okay, moment of truth. Will it boot or will it crash? It's actually booting. Yep, it turned on. Oh yeah. Let me turn off the light so we can take a look at the screen. There we go. Uh, let's see here, system information. Yep. Intel Core 2 Duo CPU P8700 at 2.53 gigahertz. All right. Okay, so the CPU was successfully upgraded in this Latitude E5500 laptop. Very nice. And uh, that's how you do it. It's really simple. 
just gonna take out a couple screws and then install the CPU like you would in a PC. I'll just stress this once more, if you'd want to know if your laptop CPU can be upgraded, open it up, see if it even has a socket, because some laptops have soldered CPUs, especially most modern laptops do, and the cheaper ones. And in the Core 2 Duo era, you have to make sure that your chipset is actually capable of supporting a Core 2 Duo CPU. The older chipsets, like the 915, only support Pentium M's. The 945 will not support Core 2 Duos. Uh, well, they will, but only up to 667 FSB, as far as I'm aware. And there are some variations in there that uh, are very picky about the kinds of CPUs you can put in. Some sockets or some chipsets only support Celeron CPUs, so there's no point in trying to upgrade it to a Core 2 Duo. Sometimes a Core Duo will work, but most of them are single core Celeron limited. So yeah, don't forget to check your manufacturer's website to see which CPUs were actually shipped in the laptops that you're trying to upgrade. So, that's the end of this video on upgrading the CPU on the Latitude E5500. Hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.